Welcome to Level Up, a podcast for independent artists navigating the Asian music industry. I'm your host, Jocelle Ko. I'm a music journalist, the founder of Platform Asian Pop Weekly, and an all-around Mandopop nerd. Join me in taking control of your career as an artist, and I'll show you how to make the most of it. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Level Up podcast. So today on our podcast, as we said last time, we're bringing you a very special episode, which is going to feature some case studies of artists whose social media strategies we really appreciate and think that lots of people, including ourselves, could learn from. So this episode is going to be available both on all the podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple, and if you're watching this on YouTube, then you obviously already know it's available on YouTube, along with a screen recording of us going through these artists' Instagram feeds, just so you can follow along, maybe follow them, and also just get a full experience of what it is about their feeds, the content that they're creating. It's just so inspiring and so interesting to us. So today we've picked three artists and they're all really really cool artists who we love and from all women and all from like a diverse set of backgrounds. So the first one is Jaguar Jones. She's a Taiwanese Australian, I think Taiwanese Australian artist um, who is really cool. Just got nom. I think she just won, right? She just won... um, or was announced to be the most played artist on Triple J in 2020. And she's had a really rough year this year with COVID, but she really bounced back from it with her upcoming EP and the way she's taken control of everything on her social media and uh, taken control of her situation and turned it around and empowered herself with it in order to help others who are facing the same things or to get through their own obstacles is just really inspiring. And the second artist who we, we're going to talk about is an Asian American artist who is based in Taiwan at the moment and sings in Chinese called Karen Cece. And she is someone who is just like a total digital native. Uh, she's very young, uh, very talented. And I really love looking through her feed because it's just like so, so hilarious that you can't stop watching it. But it's also like really high quality content to me and effortlessly creative. And the third artist we're going to be looking at, she is, I think she's British. Or is she Irish? (laughs) Let me Google this. I don't want to say it wrong. Um, She's Bangladeshi Irish. Okay, she's a Bangladeshi Irish artist who does like neo-soul, like R&B kind of alternative R&B music uh, called Joy Crooks, who is based in London. And she's just someone who's like super passionate and super real and very sweet and that really comes through in her feed and there's nothing that audiences love more than authenticity if you ask me so those are the three artists that we're going to be um, looking at their profiles and their strategies in depth and this time we've picked instagram as the main platform that we're looking at because i personally just really enjoy looking at the way people use instagram And I think it's a very universal platform as well, because here our goal is to help artists to navigate the Asian music industry, no matter where they come from. And no matter if you're an artist, like a Western artist who wants to get into the Asian market or an Asian artist who wants to get into the Western market, I think Instagram is like a very universal platform where you can really reach and create engagement with people from all kinds of backgrounds. Rather than, for example, um, Facebook, I think it's really, it's quite popular in Taiwan, but not necessarily in Europe or in the States or wherever. So, and sometimes I think the way, especially with something like TikTok, I think it is universal now, But I think the way that they use it, for example, in mainland China and the way um, they use it, for example, in the rest of Asia and the way they use it in other parts of the world is actually quite different. Like they have different trends and different challenges and things. So we're just going to go with this and let's just jump right in. (laughs) Yeah. So basically, as I say with Jaguar Jones, she is a really, really cool artist. And the first thing that stands out to me when I look through her profile is just that 
visual cohesiveness that I see here. Like there's a lot of red, a lot of orange, a lot of yellow. And even in her normal pictures, like of just day to day, like you see her wearing a lot of leopard stuff. And I think it's very intentional. Like she just, her brand is just so cohesive that the moment you look at her page, you look at all these colors, you know it's her. Like how, who else can it be but Jaguar Jones, right? So that's the main thing that comes to mind when we look at her page. And the second thing, when you go a little bit deeper, is actually you realize that she's really, really good at reusing content. And yet her whole page just looks so put together. But it's because she knows how to reuse content. For example, like these, maybe these came from the same photo shoot. These came from the same photo shoot. This one probably also came from, and these three came from the same photo shoot. Like she, I love how she's reusing content because I don't see that happen enough nowadays. Like people are always like, oh, like I did a photo shoot. And then they use like three photos from it. And then they don't use the other like 15 photos that they got from it and I just think that's such a waste because you paid good money or like you're working with like really creative talented people to create these photos and you only use three of them and then you keep the rest away until you're like oh actually I need a new set of photos now but and then you just go and take another set and I'm just like what a waste anyway yeah so that's another thing that I see about her like she really she's really good at reusing content even from her live shows. So for example, these two, they're probably, I mean, live hasn't been on for a long time this year. But you can see because of all these different bits of content that she's created, um, she's actually using them in really creative ways to like still continue putting out whatever message she's putting out. For example, she's talking about her comeback tour here. And here she's also talking about her tour, but she's talking about the Brisbane tour. So to me, that's really cool that she's doing something like that. And the third thing about her that stands out to me is the really easy but visually stimulating ways she gets her message across. And by that, I'm talking about these like colored but very striking um, little post-it notes where she writes like really personal messages to her fans. I think most of these posts were something were, were her talking about something like very personal to her, which was like sexual harassment or like guys like being predators and like sexually harassing young girls in the industry. And so I find it really interesting that she used this format because I do think that the topic at hand, it is something that's really hard to get your message across and it's really hard for you to say it out loud as well. And other girls who are in the same situations, I don't know if they'd be comfortable if they had someone who would just say it to them and be like, oh, like you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. So the way that Jaguar Jones has really stepped back but used her own profile as a way to um, spread the message on like her own feelings about these things I think it's just really inspiring how she's using this method to get through to other people who are going through this situation right now and doing it in a very non-confrontational way and like creating a safe space by using her page but also using words to write it out because it seems like a lot more personal that way and that was something that was really interesting to me because I've seen I've seen her use it a couple of times when she's wanted to say something like really personal and important to her and so the second artist that we're going to go through so it's Karen Cece she as I said before I she's very young and she's actually I would say she's a very clear social media native so the way she just does it it just seems easy and like she engages really naturally with fans which is something that I think is really cool and you can see that from her page and like the way she posts because um yes there are some posts like the posts with like brands and stuff like that but other than that like some of her posts are really just quite hilarious like quite random off the cuff but also like she's kind of like she you can see her sense of self-deprecating humor coming out she knows that she can both be beautiful and high fashion but also like hilarious like those two things don't they don't conflict 
it's really like her captions are just really hilarious. <laughs> like she's just talking about her nostrils. <laughs> anyway, so uh, at overall, that's the vibe that I get from her. Like she's just really adept at using social media to like say what she wants to say and create a space for herself on here, which is really authentic. And also she's really good at using the profile, her profile to incorporate her love for music as well like it's not necessarily all about like pictures and posting like she still really uses it a lot to talk about her music and her whole creative process while also engaging fans in the process so another thing that I wanted to look at was this video I guess you can watch it if you go onto her profile yourself but this video is the one where she asked people on her Instagram story for like lines like ask people to write lines to do with Christmas and then she turned it into a song but because she's kind of like a trap uh, dance hall EDM kind of artist so it came out to be like a really hip uh, song but it was also a really great way for her to engage with fans which I thought was like just really clever the way she did that because when people talk about engaging with fans you think about oh yeah like you ask fans questions or like you reply fans comments but actually there's so many other things that you can do with this like wait, when you, when you're talking about engaging with fans the possibilities are endless she really shows how that can like how you can do that because she's doing it in her own way while completely being herself like engaging with fans doesn't always have to be you ask them what they want and then you give them what they want because that's not really what it's about. Creating a deep, meaningful conversation with fans is what it's about. And it doesn't matter who starts that conversation. It could be you, the fans. I think it's a two-way street. And that's something that Karen CC really exemplifies in her feed to me. Also, another thing that I wanted to point out was the way she uses filters. Like, I think she's, she just uses it to play around and like... She finds different filters and then <laughs> and then uses it to take the piss out of herself, which is just like pretty hilarious. But also, if we go back to the previous video, so she created like a little music video. Like she's actually a very visual person. Like she actually created music visuals for this little song that she engaged her followers on. And the way she did it was she just put together like clips of her like lip syncing into the camera with clips of her using different filters and that's a really cool way of using filters like editing them together to create a vibe that you want that's actually very smart and it's a really quick and easy way to create content as well which she just figured out like by playing around with the app and having fun so i think that's something else about her which i really like like she's hilarious She's effortlessly creative and she uses all the tools that she has to her advantage and like to the best of her ability. So the last artist that I want to talk about was Joy Crooks. As we said before, she's an Irish Bangladeshi artist and the thing I love the most about her is that she's just super real. Like a lot of the posts are just stories like or like pictures of her in her daily life. And her taking the piss out of herself, like unfiltered, just really hilarious, making memes out of herself and not really caring so much about what she looks like. I mean, not as in as in she she's really like a really good advocate for like self-love and like loving your body. And also she's just very passionate in general because she's really interested in like things that are happening in her community and she likes to share those messages with people around her and I think there's something so endearing about that passion for like sharing your stories with other people because she's really passionate about Indian representation like gentrification and like the old neighborhoods that she grew up and a lot of other social medias as well and uh, sorry a lot of other social issues as well and that in itself, like, it just makes you want to be a part of her community. You want to know 
what she's interested in. You you want to know what she's passionate about, and then from that, you want to be part of what she's passionate about, be it her music. Or anything else, you know, and so that's how you really create a conversation and like you engage audiences by being authentic in your own way, and that's something that I think she also does really well. And another thing I like about her content is that she really effortlessly、um, incorporates her creative process and her music into her visuals. And so, because I think for her, a lot of her creative process, like, is、um, around her guitar, like her just at her guitar, playing chords and like figuring things out, and so or like at her computer. And so there are a lot of videos of her just sitting there and like singing along. Like this is her doing a Christmas cover, and then there are others where she's just like off the cuff, just. Just jamming or singing unreleased stuff, and I think that's really cool because pe- sometimes I think musicians can be a bit precious about releasing stuff because they feel like oh like this isn't ready yet or whatever. But the way she's so free about her creative process and so open, that is also like that's what draws people in because they want to know what's part of your process, like how you create. And what it is like behind the scenes before a song gets turned into a real song. So, yeah, I think the way that she incorporates her creative process into her feed as well is just really interesting. Overall, I think these are three different styles of artists who are really using the platform to their advantage and expressing themselves exactly the way they would like. One of them is really visual, like she's really like you can tell she has like a design background. She also does her own graphic design stuff, like really well curated feed, very striking visually. Another one is like to me a digital native, like really easygoing. The way she uses her feed, it's really it just comes naturally to her. You can totally tell it comes naturally, and especially the way she creates those conversations with her fans. In unique ways and uses the tools off the platform to easily create content while、um, maintaining like her own vibe, like her own high fashion slash like hilarious taking the piss vibe. That's also something that's really cool to me. And then the last artist, like more down to earth, real, very sweet, very passionate, and also very open about her creative process. Like that's also another route that you could take. So these are just three different ways that you could use social media. And these artists are some artists who I think are really doing something right. Like, and if you notice at the number of followers, they're not like huge as influencers, like one point one million, like two million, three million followers. Like, actually, they are all I I would say niche in a way, but they I mean to me it doesn't matter about the numbers. It matters about The impact that you're making, and for example, Jaguar Jones, like when she was calling out that、uh, the photographer for what he was doing to all the girls and getting so many responses back, I think that is super valuable in itself. And you don't need numbers to prove that she's really like reaching out to her community wherever she is, and it's resonating with them. So yeah, basically that was what I wanted to say about. These three artists and going through their social media strategies with you guys to kind of give you a bit more of an idea of what might work for you and all the different kinds of ways you can create content. So I hope this inspires you to create more. And if you like what you heard, please follow us on our Patreon to get show notes for this episode. And I will see you on the next podcast. Bye. The Level Up podcast is brought to you jointly by Blossoming Bridge Creative and Asian Pop Weekly. Be sure to follow on our socials at Asian Pop Weekly, and also check out our website if you're looking for more Mandarin or Asian music content. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And we'll see you on the next one.